Yay, we're starting another video. We're going to be <laughs> looking at solving <laughs> word problems. And these word problems need to be solved by using quadratic equations. So you have to first write your quadratic equation so that you can solve that. Um, but really, before I even get started on that, you got to read the problem, make sure you understand what's going on here. So the sum of the square of a number in 15 is the same as 8 times the number. Find all such numbers. Now, we did a problem like this the other day. And for these guys, we still have to follow those rules that we have for solving word problems. So the first thing is to define my variable. In this case, I want to let x equal the number. I don't know what the number is. That's my variable. That's my unknown. So that's how I'm going to define my variable. When I read this, the first word I see is sum. So that means I'm going to be doing what? I'm going to be doing addition. And what are the two pieces of the sum? The mm -hmm. two pieces are? The number and the square. Not the number, but the square of a number. And the other piece is 15. Remember the word and tells you where your operator goes. In this case, we're talking about addition, because it's the sum. If it had said difference, that would have been a minus instead of a plus. So how would you write the square of a number? X squared. Since I'm letting the number be x, the square of that number is x squared. Plus 5, oh, well, plus 15, sorry. And then plus 15. Then it says, is the same as, so that's equals, how would you write 8 times the number? We would say 8x, do you all agree? Mm -hmm. All right. So now that I have my quadratic equation, I have to solve this by using the zero factor theorem, right? Yeah. Remember, the zero factor theorem tells you exactly what you need to do. The first part is z for zero, which means you get it equal to zero. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to move the 8x over. Now, you could say minus 8x underneath both sides, but I hope that we can take care of this mentally. And whenever you move the 8x to the other side, you want to write things in descending order. Highest exponent down to the constant. So that's x squared minus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0. Do you agree? The second part, so we've got the 0 taken care of. The second part says is f for factor. So that means you factor this polynomial completely. How does it factor? <coughs> Seriously, this is like one of the easiest things we can do here. This is x minus 3 and x minus 5. Remember, the first thing we look for is a GCF, which we don't have a common factor for all of these guys. The second thing is we look at the number of terms. With three terms, we expect it to factor as two binomial <coughs> factors like we have here. So that's factored. Then I use the theorem. The theorem says when you're multiplying and you equal 0, somebody has to be 0. So that means that x minus 3 is equal to 0, or it means the other factor, x minus 5, is equal to 0. Now, if x minus 3 equals 0, that means that x equals what? Three. x equals 3, or x is equal to 5. So I have solved that equation. Now, remember, this mm -hmm. is a word problem, so we have to make sure we state our answer. It says find all such numbers. We're just looking for numbers here, so it could be positive, negative, decimal, fraction, who cares? There's nothing that says we could only use positive numbers, like the situation we had the other day where we were talking about time, and we couldn't have negative time. So here we can just simply say what the numbers are. So we can say that the numbers are 3 and 5. Those are the numbers that would satisfy the relationship that is described in this word problem. Okay. Now, if you look at the second problem that we have on the page, it says the difference of 3 times the number in 2 is the same as negative 9 times the square of the number. Find all such numbers. So it's just like this first problem that we have. We're just looking for numbers. 
and we need to take the words, just like we did at the very beginning, very beginning of this semester, take the words and translate them into an equation, right? So, again, just like this top one, we just need to define our variable. So we're going to let x equal the number. You could say the missing number. It does not matter. Now, what's the first math word you see here when you're trying to write your equation? Difference. I see the word difference. And the word difference means what? Subtraction. subtraction. So I find that word and. Here's my word and right here. So that means I'm going to be dealing with subtraction. Okay, what are the two pieces? What comes before the minus? Three, three times a number. So that's 3x. The other part of the difference is 2. And it says is the same as, so there's your equal sign. And this says negative 9 times the square of the number. How do I write that? Negative 9x squared. We will write that as negative 9x squared. So I have my quadratic equation. I need to use that zero factor theorem. So I have to get everything on one side and zero on the other side. What's the easiest and most efficient way for us to get everything on one side and zero on the other? Negative 9x squared. Right. Remember when we said when we're solving these equations, you want to make sure that the highest degree term has a positive coefficient. So this guy has a negative coefficient. It's going to work much better for me if that guy's on the other side. When he moves to the other side, that's a positive 9x squared. I already have a positive 3x and a minus 2, and that equals 0. Do you all agree? Absolutely not. <laughs> Too bad we can't edit students. <laughs> now, it equals zero. I need to factor this. So let's think about how this is going to factor. What's the first thing we look for when we're factoring? Gray's common factor. GCF, Gray's common factor. Is there something that goes into all three of these terms? No. no. We have three terms. It's a trinomial. We expect this guy to factor as the product of two binomials. Now this is where we go back and we think about the tricks that we've had, tricks that we've learned for factoring these guys easily. If I look at 9, I look at the factors for 9. I've got 1 and 9 and I've got 3 times 3. Do I get any help by writing those factors out? Yes, if I look at the factor pair of 3 and 3, they have a common factor of what? Three. Now. When I have a common factor like this among the factor pairs, I check it against the middle guy. Does 3 go into the middle term? Yeah. So that means I should use this combination of factors. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to break 9x squared down to 3x and 3x. What do you know about your signs? To multiply and get a negative 2. One is positive, one is negative. Now this is kind of nice for us because 2 is prime. There's only one way to break down 2. You just have to make sure that you do it appropriately with the signs that we have here. How do you multiply to get 2? One, 1 and 2. But you've got to make sure that you end up with a positive 3x at the end. So that makes me think, may not always be right, that the larger factor should be positive. So if I put a positive 2 here and a minus 1 there, does that work out? If I check the inside pieces, I get, negative, I get positive 6x. On the outside is a minus 3x. Does that still give you a positive 3x for your middle term? Yeah. yeah. That lets me know that as long as I've broken down the 9x squared and the negative 2 correctly, my whole factorization is good. Now, from the factor of 3x plus 2, we find out that x equals what? No. If I want to solve this guy, I would have to first subtract the 2 and divide by 3. If I want to solve this guy, I would first have to add 1 and divide by 3, right? So these are my two solutions. So I just have to find the numbers, state the answer, and we can say this. 
we can say that the numbers are negative two-thirds and positive one-third. These are the numbers that would satisfy this statement up here, where the difference of three times the number and two is equal to negative nine times the square of the number.